These are my Jack Pike Hunter boots. They're a year on from purchase and covered a fair few fells, HFT days hunts and some general garden work. They've now fully replaced my old hunting footwear, a pair of Merrells for light footed summer stalking and my 10 year old riggers that pretty much handle the worst of anything at the cost of comfort and silence. So how are they getting on? Cost at anywhere between 90 to 150 pound depending on size, these boots are an alternative to brand spanking new army surplus boots or my Cashley's best walking boots, but they are a long way off a pair of old Burks or the Chemios. They are more comfortable than the old army tabbers, more technically advanced than Mr. Ashley's best, and more stylish than the functional looking old Berg, but are they close enough to be a contender against the likes of Chemio or Harilka? Quality? Well, let's be realistic, they're a budget boot, but that doesn't mean they're an overpriced or substandard in quality. In fact, these boots have a whole host of features that impress me. Firstly, they're based on hiking boots, so for the most part waterproof matted leather and designed for enduring the UK's worst terrain for hours at a time. However, the lower tongue material that also graces other areas of the boot is synthetic and not leather, although still waterproof. That said, these appear to be phase 2 boots as the older boots had a stitch on leather jackpike patch on the tongue as opposed to the design you see here. The sole is a Vibram design that offers a nice soft rubber chunky tread that helps with stalking noise and some declarting. Topping it off is a rubber rand to help protect the waterproof leather from being saturated in wet grass and scuffing damage by other ground level debris. So yes, the design criteria was met, they are effectively an over designed walking boot for hunting. One area of the boot I really like are the lower eyelets, they swivel up and out and have rollers for the laces. Though Jack Pike officially market this as a speed lace system, they will undoubtedly preserve the good quality laces from fraying. The upper eyes are a hook style and well placed for secure holding of the foot with the top six being able to rotate independently, which does two things. One, it allows you to get your lace pressures correct to your feet and two, it limits the stress on the boot by allowing the eyes to pull in the correct direction with the laces. Overall, the double stitching and bonding of the rand to the good quality leather appears to be well executed, as does every other area of the boot. Inside is where it gets ahead of the Billy Basic boot. Thin slit microfiber lines the well padded outer shell to help insulate against water ingress and other outdoor elements, but it doesn't stop there as there's an antimicrobial chemical treatment in it to stop my UK size 10.5 flippers from stinking out the linings. The height of these UK size 11 boots comes up to around 9 inches, but as the tongue is cut low you can only really expect 7 inches of submerged protection before things start to get wet, which kicks off the boots delivery. How have these boots got on? Well let's start at the beginning in the shop where the UK size 10.5 really were very tight and the thought of one pair of chunky socks let alone two pair seemed a bad choice. The UK size 11 were a snug fit and seemed the correct size anticipating for some bedding in which was swift, but the give in the inner material was more than expected and after a long fell walk to bed them in, they soon opened up. And whereas two pairs of chunky socks now fill them in winter, long fell walks and hunts, in the heat of summer and short walks to ambushes and between HFT lanes, they do sit a bit loose on a pair of single hiking socks. The leather has not aged or degraded at all 12 months on, however I have seen other reviews of these boots up to 4 years into their life showing to have cracked and degraded. Keep in mind, these aren't Arby Tabbers or Oldbergs, and more specialist products are required to maintain them properly. Don't use boot polish on them, they are matted leather and require good quality cream for matted leather to be used on them. Polish will only cause them to age prematurely, especially on synthetic areas. If in doubt, take them to your local cobbler or shoe shop and ask them for the correct cleaning products for your leather. It's their job to know. The stitching is still in good nick, as is the rand. The tread within the sole has barely worn, which, being quite soft, I expected to be an issue, but no, they still have years left in them. Being vibrant, they are generally fairly easy to declart before being stowed in the boot bag. 
holding the boot side on, a good few smacks against solid ground, the class just come away. This not only makes boot washing a cinch, it also keeps the wife happy, as less mud on the boot means less in the kitchen sink. Lacing is easy, and the speed lid system works well, but it did take some time to work out the correct lace pattern for comfort. I found the pinched lot around the top of the boot initially, causing discomfort. Once the pattern was found, the issue went away. The hooks around the ankle did close in on the HFT course when resting on them, and as a result, Jack Pike should consider another speed lace in this area, but other than that, no issues to report. Noise wise, they're pretty quiet when stalking, though may require a little break in walk just to set the leather when you lace up. Certainly, not had any breakdown in the Vibram sole that caused squeaks and clicks. As for the antimicrobial treatment, I've had this in my racing gear previously and found it a bit of a gimmick. However, Mrs. Adams don't whinge about the smell anywhere near as much as the waterproof marrows they replaced. So yeah, suppose it has or is working. Overall though, these boots have been worth the money I paid for them, as I think they will see me through another 3-5 to five years based on the last year's use. They've been up Helvellyn and over to Patterdale, waded in streams for over 5 minutes, just past the ankles, and spent hours in sopping wet knee high grass and not let me down or had me regretted wearing them once. They still look box fresh when cleaned up as you've seen in this video, so I have nothing but praise for these well designed well priced boots. I know you could do a lot worse for much more, or less. I'd absolutely recommend them for the beginner outdoorsman.